Hey, my name is Idris, and today I'm going to be going over how I used a piece of a billboard attached to my graduation cap to raise over $2,000 for Afghan refugees. Now, to start off with, I actually graduated from the UNC class of 2020 last May, but due to the pandemic, I didn't get the opportunity to have a graduation ceremony until October of this year. Since I didn't even think I'd get the chance to decorate my graduation cap, I figured I might as well go a little bit overboard with it. And to that end, I created a graduation cap that can display anything I want on it. I figured I might as well go a bit further and allow anybody to submit their designs to my cap. That way, anyone in the community, all my family, my friends, could design whatever they wanted to and it would be shown on my graduation cap during the ceremony. But I did include one condition. Anybody who wanted to submit a design had to donate any amount to any charity supporting Afghan refugees. And to that end, we were able to raise over $2,200 and get over, I think, 30 submissions, which was way more than my original goal. Now, in this video, I'm going to be explaining the hardware and the software that made this project possible, but if you'd like a more in-depth explanation, please check the link in the description below where I've written up exactly how I did every step of the process, as well as how I did the fundraising and everything else. I hope you enjoy! To start off, let's go over the hardware that makes this project possible. Here we have the graduation cap, which I was able to steal from my girlfriend, and on top of that we have the LED matrix. For those of you who don't know, an LED matrix is a display consisting of individual LEDs, where each individual LED becomes a pixel. The benefit of using LEDs as pixels is that it's extremely bright, as each individual LED has its own light, and it's extremely colourful. The detriment is that you have all this extra space between the pixels, which means that you have a low pixel density. Now normally this isn't a problem because this is meant to be a tile, which is one of many. It would create like a jumbotron or an electronic billboard if it was in its whole grid, but on its own, you have to be careful of these problems. Now, it doesn't matter in our case because we're using it as a graduation cap. That means that the only people who are going to see it are going to be behind me in uh, the rows behind, or they're going to be on the stands. And from the stands or in the rows behind, you're going to be able to clearly see the image, as long as the image that's being displayed has a high enough contrast. Now, the thing powering the whole uh, system is going to be this Raspberry Pi Zero W here. And on top of that, we have the RGB matrix bonnet from Adafruit. This bonnet is really useful. The idea is that it allows the Raspberry Pi to interface with the LED matrix and control any of the images being displayed or to show text or even just to draw individual pixel values. It's really useful and allows me to write the scripts I wanna use in pretty much any language I want as long as I can get the C bindings working. Now here we have the USB to DC jack I was using to power the whole system and that's powered by a portable battery pack. 20,000 milliamp hours allowed me to get about 18 hours of battery life out of this whole hat, which is a lot more than I expected, especially with the internet connected. Now here, as you can tell, the LED matrix is quite thick, so to cover all the cables and other junk under it, I used this uh, blue ribbon here. The problem was that the only ribbon they had was this very glittery UNC blue ribbon, so... Eh, yeah, well, you do what you can. Now for the fun part, the software. And I say the fun part, because I'm a software developer, not a hardware engineer if you couldn't tell from the fact that I had to use ribbon tied the mess of cables under the LED matrix. So the software got a little bit more attention. The first piece of software that's important is the Python script that runs on the Raspberry Pi. That goes through each of the submissions, which are stored in a Git repo, and it displays them one by one on the cap. It's pretty simple, and it doesn't really have any dependencies, because the Git repo of submissions is just pulled uh, before I have to actually go off with the cap, so it doesn't need any internet or anything like that. But even though this is simple and reliable, I wanted the ability to actually control what was being displayed. Now, I could have tried to make the Raspberry Pi Zero be some sort of web server which I could connect to from my phone and then have a UI to control it from there, but there were some problems with that. The main one being that I couldn't control the networking. Sure, I could make sure it was connected, especially if I was connecting to my personal hotspot, but I could then not ensure that I could port forward, that the IP address wouldn't change. It'd be a whole mess, especially since I'd be on campus and not really have time to pull out my computer. I could have made the web server run on the phone and have the Raspberry Pi connect, but then you have the same problems just flipped. Now, the solution I made was a relay server. So using a piece of hardware I owned, which was a Minecraft server actually, I ran a Node.js server that relayed messages from the phone to the cap. And the way that worked, was that both the cap and the phone acted as clients to the server, which was the relay server. And using a socket.io, which is a WebSocket library that is very reliable and handles all the retry logic and the picking up where you left off logic if you uh, lose internet connection for a few hours or something. Using all of that, I was able to make a very reliable system for controlling the cap. So right now, actually, I'm running the relay server and I have the brightness set to be at 0%. 
But if I open up my UI right now, set the brightness to 100%, have it override to my logo, and turn off the lights, you can see that I can control what's being shown on the display. And this is really useful, especially if I was going indoors where I wouldn't want to have the full brightness showing, or if I wanted to be able to display like the UNC logo during the commencement speech. Now, one thing I had to keep in mind was the fact that I couldn't guarantee the Raspberry Pi would have internet the whole time. And in fact, for most of the time I was on the campus that weekend, it didn't have internet. So as such, I had to make sure that the scripts that ran and displayed all the images and went through each image didn't stop if I wasn't connected, or if a disconnect happened halfway through, or if a connect happened at any point. So all of this retry logic had to be self-contained. You can actually see how I wrote all of that by going to the link in the description below to my website, where you can see every GitHub repo I made for this entire project and descriptions of how I wrote it all. Now, the last thing I created was an LED matrix editor app. This was just a little web app I put on my website where the donation page was. And the basic idea was that it allowed people to sort of make their own drawings or edit their own creations and have it displayed on a virtual LED matrix. So they had a good idea of what it would look like without actual physical access to this cap. And this was important because a lot of the people who were donating were either strangers or people who lived far away from me and I couldn't show them the cap in person. So this LED matrix editor app also had the added ability to upload images. Say you want to submit an image, but you weren't sure if the resolution downscaling was going to reduce all the details and make it look like a blob or some weird piece of abstract pixel art. Well, using the matrix editor, you could just upload it and should you find some details that are out of place, you could edit it pixel by pixel yourself. This really eased the process for the donations because it just allowed people to, if they wanted to get creative about it, they could make their own thing, and if not, they could kind of get a preview and know what to expect. And that's basically it. If you have any more questions or you want to see a full in-depth overview of this project, click the link in the description below and you'll be taken to the write-up on my website. There, you'll be able to see every step I took to build the cap, as well as links to all the open source software that I wrote for this project. Thank you so much for listening, and if you're one of the people who submit an image or a message, then I truly appreciate your support. We raised a lot of money for Afghan refugees, and you truly helped make this graduation experience special. Thanks again, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.